And Chris is Chris good. Is on. Yes. Welcome uh, this evening uh, to our uh, regular our oh, no. our regular scheduled budget workshop. This is not an extra workshop. This is our I guess our first budget workshop after the budget hearing, the proposed town manager's budget of um, 2023. Oh, I have to pledge, allegiance. pledge allegiance. Oh, okay, sure. Yep. Everybody, please join me now for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A any comments from the council? No, from the public. public. Oh, public, public comment? <laughs> Seeing none. I, okay. <laughs> no, no public comment? That's great. We do have one counselor on voice only. Uh, counselor Duff is joining us remotely, but he is voice only so that we can read our budget books on our on our screens. So Chris, are you there? I am, and I'm on time for once. All right, <laughs> all right, done. Thank you for joining. <laughs> all right, we're good to go. Um, I think our finance committee chair wants to make a statement. Good. Yeah, just as, as a start to the budget, uh, first I'd like to thank um, Ray and Mona for putting together this year's budget. Um, you know, your first opportunity, Ray, to put the budget together, and it looks like you put a pretty sharp one together. So thank, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, as we go through the process and uh, we go through each of the different departments, one of the things I'll, I'll challenge everybody to kind of think about as we go through a budget process of what, not necessarily dollars and cents, but how do we make changes? How do we do things differently? that actually positively impact the budget, positively impact your department, and make it palatable for everybody going forward. Uh, you know, no one wants to see a budget increase. Um, it's one of the probably most popular emails we get is, you know, no budget increase, we want it flat, but costs go up each year and we recognize it. So trying to come up with the out the box, out of the box thinking, not necessarily that will impact this budget, but maybe working towards next year's budget the idea of what can we do differently and um, with that we'll just kind of kick it off and and see where we go just as a uh, quick overview um, the uh, proposed budget for 23-24 comes in at 95 uh, million forty one thousand three hundred six thousand um, dollars an increase of uh, two point two million seven hundred ninety dollars nine hundred and eight dollars or three percent which equates to a 1.4 mil increase. Um, the bulk of that increase is the result of the Board of Education, which is 67% of the increase. General government has been reduced by 10%. Um, the budget does include uh, planned initiatives for SRO or security for schools, upgrade of the townwide technology, uh, installation of a uh, cricket field, adherence to the vehicle turnover schedule in, in the highway department, um, the initiation of the recycling pilot with, through DEEP. Um, we're looking to keep all the grant funded projects on schedule. Um, we look to maintain all required uh, certifications, education, and training. And we also have uh, accommodated for the uh, continued uh, succession planning in each department. Um, in addition, I did have a, uh, one of the planned initiatives, which was to uh, phase in the CRT lunch program. I just want to make a comment about that, that uh, uh, Gina, the director of senior services, has been working very closely with uh, Mona McKim. Uh, director of Finance and Operations, um, working through her budget, working through the numbers. Um, they spent a lot of time together, and Gina um, has, re has gone through her budget and re um, reallocated some of the funding. And uh, it looks like we can accommodate the uh, existing lunch program without impacting the rest of the budget, all internally into the uh, senior center uh, budget the numbers work out well just some reallocation so I just want to throw that out there also um, 
in some of the uh, you know in addition to the, the f in in addition to food, um, there were some uh, additions and additional cuts that we have made in this budget. Um, for f for example, again, Board of Education, we cut five hundred thousand dollars from their proposal. Uh, we reduced the CIP by four hundred thousand uh, dollars. We reduced the Public Works budget by one hundred sixteen thousand uh, dollars. We eliminated a, a planning consultant at a cost of fifty thousand dollars in the in the planning division. Um, we reduced the fuel account by twenty five thousand. Um, Contingency was reduced by 150,000. Buildings and grounds improvements were reduced their request by $75,000. Um, training was reduced by 22,000. Uh, IT uh, hardware in the InformaCast was reduced by $45,600. Um, legal account was reduced by 10,000. And we had some miscellaneous uh, other accounts that accommodated to uh, or, or equated to uh, almost $74,000. Um, that brought us down to that 1.4 mil increase. So that wraps up my uh, brief summary. So I guess we uh, turn to the first department. Is that what we're going to do, Alan? Jump right into it now? Yep, uh, town council, I think, is the first department. Okay. Uh -huh. So town council budget uh, has had a reduction of uh, $2,000, approximately 4.6%. Uh, um, most of that was... Uh, in, uh, in fees? In fees, also um, expenses, membership expenses. Um, we uh, reduced the fees account by uh, 2000, fourth to $2,000. Um, we're still, you know, we could still do the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, reduced uh, a fee for the uh, Commission on Inclusion Innovations down to without from 5000 down to 1000 Um and also, um, member expenses we reduced out by a thousand. I'm still keeping, uh, you know, membership and, and training in seminars for uh, the Chamber of Commerce CBIA membership CCM um, cost and items like that. Um, so it was rather minimal there. Yeah, any, uh, any questions for any questions? Uh, Ray on the council side? No? Just with the, um, you mentioned a reduction in costs for, or for the Commission on Inclusion and Innovation. Uh, is there any thought um, as to, I'm not sure how the, what the spending looked like this year. Um, we still think they can do their work at that amount or pursue like outside grants. Is that kind of the thought on, on that change? Yeah, um, after... <laughs> Yeah, after discussions uh, with uh, uh, the Director of Human Resources um, and Legal Compliance, who's staffing that commission, um, we were comfortable with that figure that uh, programs, um, activities can still continue. And also there are grants, as you mentioned, uh, available um, and other uh, nonprofit organizations they can uh, partner with to uh, continue their activities. So that shouldn't be a problem. Great, thanks. If there's no other questions, move on to the town manager. Account. Town manager. Um, town manager account saw a 22% reduction. Uh, equates to about $71,500. Um, it was an overall reduction in every category, you know, including the, uh, you know, the, the salary differential. Um, the emergency management director position was in the town manager's budget that has been removed and moved into the uh, to, to the fire department budget so that's that was the significant uh, decrease in that in that particular uh, uh, department in line in, in, uh, in line um, 
So I just, everything else is reduced as far as memberships, um, fees, training. If I could just uh, add, so the emergency management is going to be a separate page, emergency yeah, management yeah, yeah. Uh, department. So although we have uh, fire here, uh, emergency management is going to present on the second. So is that just a shift in dollars from one account to another? That's exactly, That's really exactly right. salary, materials, yeah. supplies. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah, every, everything. I think you'll find when he out. comes in, he does a slight increase in some uh, uh, supplies or dues. Both. Or both. Yeah, both. Any questions on the town manager? No, thank you. No. No. Chris, you good? Is Chris right. driving? Yep, I'll go. Okay. That's okay. I um, can't drive. Going to human resources. Uh, human resources, um, legal compliance, and uh, risk management. Um, you see a uh, about an eight percent increase versus prior year. Um, uh, several goals, as you can read, were were, uh, were identified. Um, Implementation and updated uh, procedures for Fair Rent Commission are coming out of that department. Um, uh, looking to implement a, an executive leadership development program and also um, phase one of uh, uh, director departmental uh, performance management uh, measures and process. Um, You know, we have the contractual obligations, uh, obviously. Um, am I on the right page? No, it's okay. It's not me. I'm in. I'm sorry. I'm in, uh, I'm in finance. Okay. <laughs> yes. So Those the, numbers didn't look quite right to me. <laughs> but we'll point out that for tuition reimbursement, there's a reduction of $8,000 there, and that's really based on need by the employees. Uh, so whoever's uh, by contract requesting a tuition reimbursement for further education submits their request, which is an actual number based on uh, those employees that uh, have put in a request. So there is a reduction in that. And the deadline for the request is February every year, so we know who, you know, the amount. And it may be less because some people may not follow through with what they intend to do. Um, there's also an increase um, in fees. Um, in training, um, we have uh, looking for uh, succession planning uh, guidance, uh, very important to the town council as one of your priorities. So the uh, the bulk is in training and, and then some and then additional salaries. Yeah, just on, on the salaries, it's showing a twelve plus percent increase. Um, can you talk a little about that? It seems. Yes, what you, you'll see on some of these, particularly in a department that has a non-bargaining uh, position, that we don't budget for non-bargaining. And in this particular department, you have two individuals that are in a non-bargaining because of the confidentiality of their positions. So on last year's budget, it would have no increases. So you're actually looking at two increases. Um, as well as if there's a newer employee in the position, which I think the staff member is, they can go to steps as well. Okay. Yeah, and that's consistent throughout the whole. The right. You'll see for those that are, are just bargaining units, you'll probably see something around that 3 or 4%. Occasionally, if you have a higher or a turn turnover, those that start at the beginning step, some that has left, you'll see the cost of living, which is contract negotiated, and then moving the step but feel free to ask if you see any that no, jump out. Appreciate the explanation. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? And, Chris? Yeah, you just mentioned, Ray, fair rent. Um, it seems like given some of the issues that we were having, there may be an increase in activity for that commission. Any impact from a budgetary standpoint? No. That might change the number? No. Um, we accommodated for that increase in activity in this budget. Um, utilizing one of the new employees that were that was recently hired uh, in the uh, human services department. Um, she is already up and running and, and managing several cases right now. So we are fully confident that we have accommodated for that. Thanks. 
Anybody else? No? Do you want to take over? No. Nope. Uh, finance and accounting? We'll let the finance director oh, okay. run through that one, right? <laughs> Uh, let me let me scroll and then talk. <laughs> no. No, I've got it. Um, so what we're seeing in there is obviously an increase in uh, in salaries, and similar to to what I mentioned, you've got uh, in this case a new position uh, that would be the the new accounting manager. So you're looking at cost of living and step, and then non bargaining, and we have two uh, bargaining unit uh, positions in there. So uh, it's ten percent for that group. Um, in the auditing services, there's an increase of $8,000, 15% on that, uh, basically due to a new GASB that's in place. Uh, in the uh, audit report, you'll see that there is a very intense section that they're looking at the cost of leases, leases and subscriptions. Uh, it required uh, establishing a database uh, to cost present value of a, of a lease and I won't go into the, all the other fun things, but it's a, a rather intense um, process. So this is not just the auditing of it, but it's the uh, auditing firm was able to um, outsource, so we weren't doing all of the calculations. This was initially a, a large number because this will be the first time you'll see this uh, decrease in the future. It was where we had to look at all leases in the town, uh, lessee or lessor, review all the uh, the documents, look at the legalities and the uh, the value. So this is the first time that you'll see something like this and it'll go downward after that. Uh, also in technology software, uh, it's increase in that. And that $5,000 for the most part is what is allowing us to look at this uh, budget document uh, online. We have uh, the photocopier, you'll see things going on with that. Throughout all these documents, as you know, we tried to uh, decentralize photocopiers and cell phones. Uh, this 22-23 budget is the first time that you see those numbers. It was our first uh, attempt at trying to isolate what these costs are. I think we're seeing now more of what the true expenses are and making a, a better estimate of what the uh, departments are really experiencing. So hopefully next year we'll have a, I think a, we'll a see tight it. control on that. So that's it for finance. Uh, on, on the auditing fee, do, do we have a process every three, five, whatever number of years where we go out to bid for auditors just to see if we're competitively pricing? Get, you know, we, yeah, prices, yeah. Or yeah. I think historically we have not gone for a bid, but we do have them come in with quotes and then we'll bring it to finance for, uh, for approval. So I, we're on the, this will be our third year. They were doing a three year uh, process so I believe the 2324 would be the the third okay and then after that would we then we'll come back and different? if we want to take a an extension a quote or if we want to go out to bid then we'll do whatever right. we need to do from that and it goes through finance so we'll right. make sure that because as, as a rule they do a multi-year uh, contract <laughs> on that so we definitely would come to finance and say hey, or, you know which would we prefer right. okay. mm -hmm. Uh, just a question on the, um, the the photocopier and then supplies. So, I just, uh, since you're, I guess maybe relabeling these cat or building these categories out. Yes. Percent, what is that? Is so photocopier consists of what? It happens in finance. There's actually, if you get to, to visit our little lobby out here, there's a very large copier out there that is. Uh, accessible by other departments because it's a very nice high-speed uh, color. So we were originally budgeting that to be just the copiers that are within the departments, but now we are looking at prorating that because obviously that's what gives us a very inflated look in the finance office. But we do take the uh, staff member in my office, actually takes these invoices and looks at each copier, the location, the usage, and are really trying to perfect um, the numbers on that. It's a lease, right? They are. Mm -hmm. Yep. And w it's one lease? Yes. Yes, it is. So one lease providing all the different copiers Correct. out. Correct. 
yes. So the vendor could provide that feedback. They they give a very detailed invoice, so it's it, it's not a terrible challenge. I mean, we've got spreadsheets and dropping the numbers in and <laughs> export it up to the uh, the financial system. Pretty simple process. And the the lease doesn't include um, toner, tune-ups, paper, right? That's another cost. It's another cost, but we're also putting it into this because if anything's photocopier, whether it be the lease or the usage per copy, is in this. Any other questions? No. Nope. Um, Mona, I have one. Just on the on the auditing services, mm -hmm. how many leases do we approximately have as a as a town? You know, I was actually quite shocked that we're going back to leases from uh, maybe vehicles that are three or four years. We've got leases uh, for different services. We had about 20 uh, plus leases. Um, some of them were more challenging uh, to look at. Like, for example, the um, the towers, the uh, what do they call it? The electric towers that are uh, cell, out. Cell tower. So those heads were very old that had been in existence. So it's gathering the documentation, having someone read through them. So they're, although it's a smaller number, some are pretty in depth to look at. Okay. And did cell tower. before we engaged the auditing firm, did we look at other companies that do this? No, actually, at this point, it was the option to probably do it for ourselves it was a short turnaround mm -hmm. uh, or have them you know at least create the database and we could take it from there okay. like I said the following year it looks like obviously we don't have a lot of uh, leases in there so perhaps if anything we'd have one in there and the cost of inputting one would be okay a lot. Alan just on your comment on the um, on the leases I it just jogged me that several years ago we talked about um, there are firms out there that will take your leases in the in the aggregate all your leases and uh, br bring them in under their management and they can reduce the leases mm. um, do we ever did that ever go anywhere not through me it's the first I heard it as they said I said mm, that that sounds intriguing I'd like to know more yeah, about that uh, all right so we'll mm -hmm. I'll, yeah. I'll get you a name or two but Definitely. there are companies that will literally, that's what that, that's all they do is lease negotiation management, and they have usually reduced by 30 to 40 percent the cost right. of your, um, your lease, your service contracts. Yeah. Right, your lease has your service contract in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was just going to ask a similar question. I'm not sure if we can group our leases into, like you mentioned, the cell towers, the vehicles, but if there's a way to bundle any of them um, as perhaps as we look at doing renewals um, or following up on what um, Ed just mentioned, I think it's a, a good idea now that we've taken the step to, to kind of get all the information about what leases we do have, get, getting a little bit more um, a better deal, I, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll definitely. Be a very mm -hmm. good approach. Yeah. We'll definitely look at that. Great idea. Yeah. Thanks. If we're good on uh, finance and accounting, we'll move on to tax collection. <clears throat> tax collection. Assessor is not here tonight, so yeah. I am yeah. passing him over. <laughs> All right. Yeah, tax collection, um, pretty pretty basic. You collect taxes, but um, there, are, there there's a, a goal number two I'd like to highlight uh, as a major change. Um, um, the tax collector is looking to... Um, increase her activity in collecting back taxes from delinquent business accounts. Um, there's been issues in the past. Um, she'd like to develop a program, which I, I believe she's, she's working on. Um, it has been thinking about. Um, so that's just one of the goals that I just want to let you know about that's highlighted under this particular uh, department. Um, Is there a new... Um any sort of new activity associated with that change, or, or not activity, any sort of uh, funding required for that change, or just a program she's working on? Yep, no, uh, no additional funding, just changes in programming and, and policy and uh, a little more field work. That's all. So this isn't showing an additional cost associated with that? No. Okay. No, that's entirely in-house staff. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the department also um, um, has seen a vacancy of uh, one of the uh, technical assistance um, 
You may recall in my proposed budget, um, we were we are proposing to um, fill that position as also as a uh, cross-trained for the vacancy in the assessor's department, which we'll talk about next time. Um, both departments have a vacancy, same level. Um, I feel that this particular um, position can be cross-trained to accommodate both departments. Both departments, all, they work closely together, and they both um, are very familiar with their each busy times of the year. So they will be able to work, the directors will be able to work together to um, manage this f floating part-time position, a floating full-time position um, between both offices. And logistically, they're right next to each other. And they actually share a, a room so they can pass back and forth very easily. So we're saving, one, we're saving the equivalent of one full-time position then? Yes. Yeah. Just for looking at the uh, the screen, you will not see it in the tax office that the two, initially when we're creating the proposed budget, one position was vacant and then the second came. So you'll see that it'll show um, the one position in the tax office. The When we review assessor, there will be a, a decrease of one full position. I think ultimately we may put the cost share across two departments for adopted, but still the dollar impact is reflected on one department page. So when you sh when you job share like that, how do you determine who the employee reports to? According to Human Resources, <laughs> <laughs> who has already just told us that uh, yes, it can be a, a shared um, position. So I think we're was, we're confident that we're going to be able to do that. Yeah, it is still a shared. It shouldn't be a problem, and if. It's, if it does become a problem, it becomes a management problem um, for me. And I will take <laughs> okay. care of that. <clears throat> Any other questions? No? All right. Uh, tax collection. Central supplies. Central supplies. Going through the big departments first, huh? <laughs> In numerical order. You want me to touch on that? Yeah, one? we're going to, because it's such a, you know, Yes. Central Supplies is uh, it's really a page that's doing exactly what it says. It's uh, those those uh, larger expenses such as uh, the copy paper where we're doing a bulk purchase and, and a number of departments are sharing. Um, you'll have postage, any of the, uh, the legal ads that are going out, whether it be coming from the planning department or from HR department or finance. This is just uh, central advertising um, and printing as well. Uh, again, the office supplies being paper. Uh, we're seeing a reduction in advertising because we're trying to do more online rather than any uh, of this uh, paper driven. So we're doing more outreach. So we'll see some reduction in there. So overall, a decrease on the page. Any questions? I can't see Chris, so I'm just kind of. Chris, you OK there? Yeah, my only question would be just in terms of the advertising, uh, do we have metrics or some way that we're checking to make sure that the switch from print to online is effective? I mean, I, I think that's probably generally the way things are going, but we might also have like trade publications. I just wanted to make sure that, or understand a little bit of the reasoning behind uh, there. I, th I feel that we were, there is a proposal, legislative proposal all the time about trying to get away from print um, legal notices, but I don't think that's gonna probably go too far. Um, we, there will be times when we will have to advertise and print just to reach a certain audience in town, um, um, but not for everything. Um, so um, we're, we're, we're pretty confident that we are, you know, we're covered. Um, you know, if we go zone, for example, there's a huge cost differential in the Hartford Current. If you go a local as opposed to statewide, um, sometimes, you know, in the past we've gone statewide, maybe, you know, maybe I've done it as economic development director, not really knowing at the time there was such a huge cost differential. Um, if we don't have to go statewide, which we usually don't now for a lot of these state federal grants it's just a circulation of uh, of uh, 50 percent or more you know within a within an area um we will try to keep we will we will focus on local advertising and then also uh free advertising it would be the rare reminder so that advertise sorry go ahead 
rare reminder and even the life if we have to. You know, we, we're looking at different ways to get the word out at a less, at less expense. So this is this is the advertising, or the, I guess the more the the noticing that we're required to do, exactly. and it less than like advertising for like in the like a trade publication for economic development. Yeah, is that the, accurate. Right. Yeah, this okay, is, that, yeah, makes, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like yeah. The uh, the others is you know like for for trade publications for me would, would be more with the uh, you know economic development trying to advertise sure. something, you know, I'd go to a trade, but. Uh, I'd cut that down quite a bit in the past because it's very expensive. And again, it's most of it's online. Um, you know, digital advertising is uh, much less expensive and much more impactful for that type of uh, advertising for uh, like RFPs, um, you know, advertising a piece of property, advertising available property, buildings, things of that nature. Thanks. Ray, on that, the, the legally mandated advertising, though, that has to go in the current, right? I, I think yeah. it's usually required a yes. paper of general circulation. That, yeah, that kind of thing. yeah, hitting at least 50% or 51% of the population. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Move on to uh, legal. Yeah. Legal is interesting. Um, We are looking to um, reduce those costs as much as we can, even though we have quite a bit of activity um, currently. Um, and the uh, process to reduce those costs is to uh, institute a new policy where um, every request has to come through my office first to review. Um, if we do not have to use a, an attorney, we will not. We have. For example, in the Community Development Services Department, we have people who have been there for a few decades who, ap who absolutely know their business, um, and they are capable of making decisions. Um, there are times when, if I get a request, I can maybe make a quick phone call to one of our attorneys and avoid a, an, an official legal opinion request, which will cut down on the uh, costs also. So that's what we will be implementing in this year's budget. And really, that's that's the size of it for the for legal. I just guess I have one on the tax appeals portion. That's the biggest uh, decrease. Yeah. And while we're decreasing our fees, what is the cost to the town of not pursuing these type of items, or what's the approach that we're able to reduce that? by $15,000. Because of the reval is basically that he's going in for reval, so this will be the, the peaks and valleys. We'll see it. Definitely it'll pick up. Okay. Uh, so we've only got a, a handful of existing cases that are in existence now, and then as he goes through the reval, then we'll start seeing them when the information is out there. So we'll see the decrease this year and probably the increase in the following. Right, so this is the one-year dip. This is the dip. Okay. We have to enjoy it. The calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we counted it. Right, well, that explains why we're seeing a decrease. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on legal? A question. Re refresh my memory. Current town council, um, we had the similar arrangement as we did for the previous town council of a fixed monthly rate for you know, kind of all you can eat for legal services uh, except for litigation. You know, we do not have a retainer. We had a retainer under the previous town co uh, council. Um, it's, it's general fees. We have a, also an account for labor. We have a, a labor council also. The point is that every task is being billed hourly now, though, right? But there's, yes. no, there's yes. no flat fee component Correct. to it anymore. Correct. Okay. Has, has that been explored with with new uh, with new council? I mean, you talk, you know, you talked about trying to avoid contacting council and trying to handle more of these things in house to avoid the expense. But the you know, flip side of that was when we had a fixed fee arrangement that you could you could make use of, of the legal resource without worrying about any additional expense. Didn't they offer that as an option when we were pricing it? We had that under uh, Mirtha Kalina. We had a retainer. Right. Um, I wasn't really involved much. You know, except for whatever I was working, you know, economic development or farmland, but um, uh, it could work out that way in the future, um, depending on you know the who 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 we work with. Um, I really can't talk to that particular 
question, it's, you know, as far as if, if it worked out or not. Well, yeah, my question was the current arrangement. So you're saying that that's not right. that's we, not the case right now. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just have the you know the hourly billing. Then we have uh, the, and there are different levels of billing depending on you know who we access. Well, yeah, understood. I, understand. I, I, I just put out there that it, it's I don't know if we're locked in contractually or if it's something that can be explored you know during the term of the engagement. I mean, obviously, it, okay. it gives us that element of predictability. Um, you know, that, that I thought was a benefit in past years. So if, if it's possible, again, I don't know if, if we're already committed out of that at this point, but if, um, it might be worth looking at if, if it's, uh, yeah, my, it's a possibility. My guess is we would be able to uh, have at least discussions with them. I don't, I don't think that's out of the uh, picture. I think that's something worth looking at. Okay. We'll do that. Um, this is kind of related to legal. Um, do we have any ability to re to uh, recover legal fees, say from the concierge situation or anything like that? And if so, are you you probably not budgeting any of that? I would imagine because you don't really don't know. Yeah, we, we we can't really yeah. predict that. Um, but and that would hit the revenue side anyway, right? In certain cases, um, we would consider going after legal fees, mm -hmm. but we're not budgeting anything because it's too hard to right. You know. right. Well, I mean, I think with a town, realistically, you usually defend it. <laughs> I mean, well, no, but like, I mean, right. concierge is like the one. That, that's one that exception, yeah, but I think that's kind of a rarity. But usually, you know, a, a tax, pa a, a property owner suing to no, no, an appeal, that, you know, yeah. property tax appeal, that kind of thing. So you're usually on, right. on the wrong side of it as far as claiming fees is yeah, concerned. Yeah, like concierge is kind of the one example that I was yep. wondering. That and, and other uh, blight issues and, you know, right, I, right. enforcement issues. Are we good on legal for now? I'll move forward with probate. Okay. okay. Let me get to my probate page. No change. Yeah, there's really no change there. I know there is the issue of the uh, whether it's 10 day voting, 14 day voting, and there's no decision made at this point. Um, so that's you know this is probate. You, you skipped so, probate. We got to get the registrar. Uh, <laughs> you're at, you're at, we're there now. Jump. <laughs> Actually, there's two. We got, we got town clerk no. too before that. I'm sorry. So no I change apologize. on. No change. I'll, I'll go. There's no change on probate. Uh, we'll get information oh. as we get closer to the adoption. This comes from uh, Newington is basing it on Grand List. So they have not completed yeah. their numbers at this point. Just a you know, Sorry. you're throwing me off. You, you should be sitting at the back table. Every time I look up, I, I'm looking at you. For registrars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, yeah, Any questions back. on probate with no change? All right. I do anticipate some questions on registrar of voters. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Oh, registrar. No, it's not a Go for it. It's a different order than that. Yeah. I have to, I'm going to recuse myself since my husband is a registrar of voters. So I'm going to leave the room. Please Somebody right. please come get me when you're done. Oh, that's okay. right. Got it. Is that the dinner break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Hmm. Yeah, there's a uh, scroll down a bit. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at an overall 4% uh, increase in their budget. Um, a good portion of that is in supplies. Um, I'm sure um, in preparation of the uh, proposed legislation, whether it's 14 days or 10 days, um, staffing, I believe you need at least I think they were looking at about like five thousand dollars per day to keep that open. Uh, we're not sure. We, there's a lot of questions with this since, particular since both legislation. Since registrars are, are here, do you want to tell us maybe, what you uh, do know at this point, or maybe each one of you? It, I know we're working in an area that we don't have answers yet. You know, yeah. And it's really hard to do a budget when we don't know what our costs are and how many days. But and that's, yeah, we're we're waiting with. Anticipation to have the law passed, then we'll know truly where the direction we can go ahead. 
but right now we're anticipating about five thousand dollars per day um, of early voting and it looks like if I had to name the horse in the race they're looking at 14 days um, we're trying to work with um, Tom, you just talking to the mic so make sure Chris could hear you is that better thank you okay um, we we're working with people at the state level and our state representative and we're requesting that they allow us not to respond to everyone with the first class mail and when I say respond when somebody comes in to register to vote we have to mail them first class uh, a letter saying yes you've registered to vote well in early voting they're standing right there and we have their driver's license so why can't we just hand it to them that's the type of cost savings we're working for um, because of poll books in our office now we've reduced the number of uh, election workers that we have and we're really looking forward to um, the new Secretary of State and her willingness to pursue poll books that's one of the things that she wants to do she's also already gone to the State Bonding Commission and she's requested 25 million dollars to replace all of our tabulators statewide um, I would love it if the 25 million came to our town but you know um, apart from that we're we're trying to run as lean as we can, even though it's a, a little bit of an increase. Does the five thousand dollars? How many? How many um, polling stations are you going to have for five thousand dollars? One in the town hall. Okay. Well, actually, in the community center. Okay. Yeah. And the five thousand um, dollars for one oh. location. Um, the early voting will include also weekends, correct? Either a Saturday or at least a Saturday or I don't think a Sunday. I could be wrong, but I think there is a weekend in there. They're talking about Sunday also. So do these uh, numbers yes. include? It's $5 per day, and I've just averaged it out. And so do we? what do we do with respect to overtime for? Just continue. Yeah, right. Yeah. At this point, we're, we've got nothing on the page, so anything that goes above and beyond that could be absorbed through uh, contingency, and I think we could still handle that. That's our yeah. our goal. Yeah. All right. So, so right now they're just planning for le proposed legislation. You know, they have the rooms, they have the person. You know, they're looking for security. Also, you need to have a different type of security because you have ballots, right, that are moving from. You know, you have to have different locks. It, it's quite a quite a process that we have to go through now but we will accommodate that through uh, again as Bona has said through contingency if we have to and what are you hearing in terms of reimbursement I, what I heard um, there's going to be partial reimbursement but do you know how much that might be they're talking about reimbursement for setup and they're not what guaranteeing does that mean? it but they're talking the first two years Okay. Um, and mainly the reimbursement will not be for employees it'll be for materials um, and we'll have to talk about materials All right. um, already the state is is looking at the tabulators and I think that's the big bill that they're going to pay um, the reason they're talking about only two years is because then the legislators can come up for re-election and who knows what the next group of legislators will do Okay. So, Tom, or maybe maybe Ray Mona, mm -hmm. based on what we're hearing, we have um, about eighty thousand dollars that we could have that is not in the budget that we may incur, but may get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. That we kind of have to potentially prepare for at somewhere potentially. potentially within the budget. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. So, um, so uh, let me get this down a little bit. Can, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so I, I, I kind of agree with Tom with the, with the 5,000, but, but on the other hand, um, so there's three bills in front of the legislator, uh, legis uh, the legis um before our uh, legislative uh, bodies right now. Um, 
We don't know how many people they go, they're going to require by law. Um, and, and I know, I think, I think we're um, budgeting for a little bit high on, on how many people we're going to have. Um, it, it could go, the payroll could go as low as uh, 1,145 a shift, you know, which would be a day. Um, but um, anyway, um, and, and the three the three laws are um, ten days, fourteen days. Um, they had an eighteen day, but that one didn't make it through a committee. So um, it's possible that the five thousand may be a little high, but like the mayor pointed out, the um, custodial in the weekend will probably be higher too because you know because of overtime. Um, and like Tom pointed out, we are going to try and keep it as lean as we can. Um, but so. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Phil, just a quick question on what do you know about? Um, kind of not on the budget part of it, but the numbers part of it. But uh, you know how normally at polling centers, uh, candidates and their teams end up with lots of posters and and signage at the polling center. So now we're going to be open for 14 days with a, with one polling center. It, you're not going to allow, it, does the bill not allow for campaigning right it's outside gonna, of It's still going to be the 75 foot from the polling place. So we're going to have to determine that 75 foot. Um, yeah. We probably room. need to have some type of policy that we're not going to allow it inside. And 75 feet is obviously going to be you know, wherever outside you can measure that, but right, 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 yeah. from the, right. from the door, yeah, from the right, entrance yeah. right. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think I don't think you were also suggesting that it would not be there for even seventy-five feet from the door. We not have like a hundred signs stuck by town hall for two weeks. Yeah, I, I it, <laughs> definitely I would I would be suggesting that we, as a town, make a make a decision not to have that extra clutter outside the polling centers or and, and and whatever we do allow you know we should set a limit on it because right now I think you know we put the voters through a gauntlet you know of 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 uh of posters and signage at the three polling centers anyway that that you know that's getting us off into another area but yeah I I think we should manage that process a little bit I don't know if the town's authority is to I manage it on that. I think it's usually been kind of a treaty between the two parties, right? Well, I mean, the, the yeah, it's different in every town, you know. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we have a lot of, we have a lot of signage. Uh, if I may speak on that, what we've done in the past is we have the 75-foot signs outside the doors immediately entering uh, the community center where we would have uh, election day registration. We'll use that same approach. And then in any hallway, which is 75 foot or more, we'll just print off a sign and put it up. And that way we can take it down immediately. That'll still allow us the 75 foot barrier. And if anybody comes into our community center or in a town hall and they're actively um, doing anything with politics, we can just have them removed because they'd be uh, disruptive to the flow. Wouldn't be allowed. Just one other question. Do we know what early voting looks like at this point? Like, we're talking about a budget, but is it from 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock to 8? 8 to 6. Oh, sorry. They're, they're thinking 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. They, they're, they're, the, the, um, the governor wants maximum hours and minimum uh, message. In other words, we were trying to go for a split, like one day do eight to eight to four or eight to two or something, and then the next day do it later. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's got to be maximum hours, minimum uh, messaging. So in other words, let people know it's open all day. Okay, so when you refer to one shift, you're referring to a 10 hour, eight to or 12 six. hour, eight to six. Yeah. Okay. So it's a full. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And Thank, it, there may be other questions. It also though. depends, if I may, it depends on the bill that passes. We do have three bills up there now. Right. And one of them is uh, 10 days, one's 14 days, and one is 18 days. They passed that out of committee. Um, all, yeah. 
all of the bills are a slightly different in their nuances as to the hours. I was reading one uh, this morning that was saying that we, can, we would have to have at least two days, partially on a weekend, I believe, where it was eight to eight, um, and then normally on the weekdays, it would be 10 to six. Phil, what was Carrie talking about last night when she said there had to be like a two-day break in between? Between the end, oh, the uh, between <laughs> the end of early voting and actual election day, just to give. Oh, so you can open up your stations and stuff. Right. Okay. Just give us a break, basically, to get ready. Correct. Yep. What do you do with all of the? So you're going to lock up all of those um, ballots that you receive in the, the community center? The ballots center? will be. It, it won't go through um, a tabulator at the polling place. It's they're going to be collected in a locked, secure box, and they're going to be put through election day using the um, absentee ballot tabulator. So when someone comes into town hall, they're not filling out the ballot with the little circles when they vote yes. early? They are. Yeah, they are. But, but they're but not putting it, it in the correct. machine. Correct. And who's going to put it in the machine? The people that do the absentee ballots. We have a, we have a staff that, that we have volunteers that do absentee ballots. And how many people will be, how many of those machines? Will just be one. The number of people that we have will depend on how many ballots. So where is that machine going to be in town hall? Yes. It'll be in the town hall, but not during early like no. for early voting. After the fact. The process will be from all three of the, the uh, bills up there that people will come in on early voting. They'll go to the room that we've assigned. They'll complete the process, do their ballot, put it in an envelope, and all of those envelopes will be put in a box. At the closing of that each day, Phil and like I will take Like a cardboard take box? box? No. No. <laughs> a secure, a secure. A locked box? Locked box, yes. We have a metal box, which the town curious. graciously provided. <laughs> we're going to take that to the town clerk. Um, Who's who, going to take that to the Phil you, and I. The two, together? Together. Okay. Because yeah, the ballots can't safe. be with one person. Okay. And you're going your safe. And they go in the safe. Sandy has uh, agreed to have one of her staff or herself okay. uh, here in the extended time so that she can receive them. Okay. And then it becomes no different than when you do your absentee ballot. Exactly salad. right. Correct. Cool. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, just, 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 just a, quick, to, a quick question. So does this go in effect this year, or is it a case where the law gets passed and then next year well, it would be in effect? Or do that, we not know until that's the, a good question, whatever Chris. passes passes? The Secretary of State is trying to push for this year because, as you know, next year is a presidential election, and she wants to kind of use this as a testing ground because, obviously, mm -hmm. the percentage of voters in a, in a local election is different than the percentage of voters in a presidential year. So she w she's trying to get it for this year. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So in terms of the impact of our budget, it's just one of the many other unknowns that we currently have to deal with. Absolutely. I have to say though, it's my understanding that it's going to happen. I know that CCM kind of took the position like there's three bills out there they passed committee it's going to happen and even though every single mayor is crying about it and for a select man or for a select woman we've been told at this point you know get ready right because like you said <clears throat> they want this to be the testing ground for the presidential election just to jump back onto a budget item, um, if you look <clears throat> under the salaries, and you see a 7% increase, that reflects um, a, uh, they have not had raises in two years. So we're, we're, we're accommodating um, that in this particular line item. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll move on to town clerk. Paper. <laughs> okay. 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 Town clerk. Um, Amy. Amy. Oh. 
Oh, okay. we gotta get Mimi. Thank you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mimi. Thank <laughs> you. Uh -huh. like we were voting on it. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you. It's the fact that you weren't there. <laughs> All right, town clerk. Um, that's just uh, that. This budget shows a uh, slight decrease in, in training, and a uh, little bit of increase in contractuals. Um, as was mentioned, um, uh, Sandra, the town clerk, is uh, ready and willing and able to uh, do what she has to do for the uh, whatever extended uh, legislative bill is passed. Um, this budget accommodates for that also. Um, you know, it allows her to continue doing what she does in uh, the way she does it, which is a very uh, efficient and expertise way. Yeah. You good? Okay. Any questions on town clerk? No. Move forward to information technology. Information technology. A lot of big words, mm. <laughs> a lot of technology. <laughs> As he flips through the paper book. <laughs> uh, so there are um, some significant uh, uh, changes um, coming down the pike that uh, John Nowakowski has planned for and proposed. Um, and we've adopted for this proposed budget. Um, you know, aside from the, uh, some of the increases and decreases in contractual services, um, uh, a, major, uh, a major component of this proposed budget is um, utilizing um, what's called the, uh, what's called, you know, and I'm not a techie, but it's Microsoft 365 that many of you probably use in, in, your, in your own way. Um, by um, signing up for, for that particular uh, item, um, that will functionally uh, replace, I, I believe, six or so existing um, what we call points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, six what? If we, let's go to the, uh, to the point, point. Point, point solutions? Yes, point solutions. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to be technical here, <laughs> and I'm trying to avoid Calling up Mr. Nowakowski at any point in time here. I'm sure Wait, he appreciates this. Way for me to say artificial intelligence. But I'm not doing very well right now. And, Maybe not. Just, <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it is. It's it's taking on. Uh, we've got several other vendors, so you'll see decreases in, for example, the maintenance contracts um, line. The Microsoft 365 is going to be an all-encompassing, is going to take care of the, the contracts that we have for mail service, for uh, for storage, uh, for a variety of items that we've uh, invoiced separately. So it's going to kind of do a collaborative approach, uh, which is something that we needed to do. Uh, which we're looking at it'll uh, strengthen uh, a lot of our technology abilities. Um, this is something that we are pointing toward, uh, I think I'm gonna jump a bit to that information technology service line. About the 17,000, we've got a, a one-time uh, cost in there is a risk assessment. Uh, <clears throat> that is definitely something we need to have every like five. four to five years. Uh, it's, it's something that's coming up during our audit reviews uh, that we need to be prepared for. And this is an outside service, just looking at the systems and processes that we have. Uh, so we're looking at putting that in place and then the Microsoft 365 will, in a sense, go hand in hand with that because it's going to show that we are going in the direction of uh, better security and uh, have us prepared for, for that. And yeah, I mean, we, in my language, you know, that bring it down to me. Um, it's important that this budget preserves and, and, and plans for the cybersecurity um, risks that we, we have to plan for, as like Mona said, um, for the auditing. And also, even if we go out to bonding again, you know, in, or selling bands, we, that's one of the first questions they ask. So we have, if we have this in place, which we have planned for, 
Um, you know, that's, that was a priority for us, make sure that we are secure. Um, and also, it's a decrease on equipment, really. You know, the, you know, storage into the cloud now. You're it, moving to the cloud. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And, you know, the equipment takes up quite a bit of uh, capacity. So, um, and it's also becoming obsolete. So, you know, that, that's, uh, that's another, another benefit that we plan for in this budget. Is that? Is that and we did find it was compatible with the uh, criminal justice. So that was an essential that we had to be sure that whatever we were going in, whichever direction, was uh, was compliant with uh, that as well. So that's being unique to municipalities. But uh, yeah, and, and the uh, the utilization of uh, existing templates within the program that we can utilize for policies. Mm -hmm. Was there a calculated savings, future savings on this already? I'd say, I don't think we'll see it in this budget, but... Right, right. You'd probably see it uh, probably a bit later on, perhaps, but we don't know. As technology changes, we may think it's a savings today, but, you know, the prices go up for, for next year, and, and we're looking at something different. But I think the consolidation of that and removing so many other um, endpoints um, right. is, is the value in that. No, that's absolutely uh, yeah. correct. And of on course, that. I said just hopefully we can even see it in a reduction in a cyber policy. We have to get a, a, a cyber risk policy, um, and you know, even though it it just sounds like another insurance policy, it's uh, I'll speak for from definitely working with John Novakowski on this, and then from the insurance side, it, it is a challenge because there are so many expectations of, of security in place, and that if we don't have some of these tools like a Microsoft 365, um, you know they may not necessarily uh, want to uh, honor us that policy so we've been fortunate so far but we really we're ready for this yeah you see de decreases in um, capital costs that, you know that, which offset some of the costs of the Microsoft 365 um, it's too soon to know what that is yeah yeah. Yes. yeah okay yeah but currently in this particular time frame it you mean as we as we lose some some hardware at, during the transition to the cloud, or as a result of the transition? Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And do gotcha. either Kerma or CROD provide assistance with risk assessment? They may, and in fact, we're looking at at a variety of of different resources that can can address that which again anything from you know the to the vendors that that uh, sell us the equipment would be an external source uh, you know the auditors can do an aspect of it in fact they're very intense when they do the audit on uh, you know the requirements in place so they definitely can do a piece it may be a conglomerate of all of that but from quotes and just estimates of where we need to go that we're putting that that number out there it's around 15 16,000 uh, ideally it would be less but but it could be greater so that's that's a placeholder for that but definitely the assessment has to occur so as a non techie but a user of office 3 of Microsoft 365 how far are we taking the implementation I mean what what software features are we utilizing are they going to replace things like um, zoom going to teams are we going to be able to replace desk phones using teams you know what's the, what's the long-term plan of its implementation well, I was gonna say, definitely the, the major one we've had to look at is the, the whole email yeah, server I mean, that's that's going to be the first piece that we're going away from yeah. that's I think from what they're telling us it's about 15 percent of our uh, storage space and uh, and obviously is probably more vulnerable to breaches in what we have versus something like this so do we go further outward i think once you're in there it, it's it gets you know we have to it gets costly we need to look at how much it will cost us in the future but um you know initially it's you know internally it will help us be more efficient you know be able to conference like the private side the private world does mm -hmm. um um, and also, you know, look, I believe it, it also uh, will help us with the long-term video, mm -hmm. you know, archive storage items of, of that nature. Um, but, you know, once you start going further and further, the costs do escalate. So right now we're just trying to get in the door, you know, do what, you know, replace what we need to replace, right. you know, to keep us moving the next, you know, three, 
years or so, through to five years? Well, looking from the software side, like right now, we as a town use Zoom for our mm -hmm. town meetings. Mm -hmm. Could we eliminate Zoom and, and use Teams? Is that allowable? One, is it allowable from the state side? Um, but two, could we now get rid of our Zoom account and move utilizing Teams? Well, I'm not sure if they would go that. It <laughs> entirely depends. I don't know. It's, it's something that at our level we didn't discuss, but I can't imagine why we couldn't move to Could Teams instead. John, John's John here. Yeah. Could you want to do you Teams? Ask the expert. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to happily tag you out of this one. <laughs> Well, I, I think one of the, maybe one of the things we want to look at as we move forward, it sounds like the transition to Office 365 is really the first phase of implementation that sets us up for other things. So what does that pathway look like over the next couple of years once we make that initial jump in terms of consolidating other point solutions? And the other thing Alan, like Alan mentioned, getting rid of desk phones and, and yes. what other savings could we use once we're on there? I think be very, a lot of us, I think, would be very interested in seeing what, what that might offer, what that path looks like. Sure, it's Chris. probably a multi-year project, I would think. Uh, absolutely. Definitely going to be a multi-year process. Um, so the licensing we're looking at, uh, we want to make sure that we're actually at a high-level licensing um, in that in regards to compliance features, uh, things like being able to uh, e-discovery, FOIA requests, um, uh, CGIS compliance, audit compliance, uh, templates to make sure that we're using um, proper you know uh, proper framework and it's that we can be proved in, in case of uh, you know having to you know do cybersecurity audits or things like that uh, e even the state requires cybersecurity mm -hmm. audits nowadays um, as far as uh, specific features like uh, like voice uh, I'll address that first um, it's a possibility moving forward it wouldn't be day one uh, probably not even probably not even year two uh, if we were to move the voice it'd probably be year three uh, we still have a, a rather sizable uh, infrastructure on the phones, on the on-premise phone system right now that uh, we're going to maintain that investment. You for, mean voice over IP? Yes, that is correct. So we want to maintain that, that investment that we've got for as long as possible. Um, whether or not we move towards the uh, um, getting rid of the, the desk phones, um, Microsoft Teams actually works with the phones we have now. Uh, I have specifically have looked at that, and it you know the, the model of Cisco phone that we have now with the, with the proper firmware will actually work with Microsoft Teams over a SIP uh, connection. So we're, we're actually very fortunate fortunate in that regards. Um, <clears throat> as far as getting rid of our Zoom client, uh, we'll have to see on that. Uh, the Zoom is tightly integrated with what we do for um, uh, YouTube and and a few other ways of getting out. So uh, the Zoom. Client, it's you know uh, the Zoom account itself uh, is less than two thousand dollars a year. It, it's not a bank breaker per se, um, but it's something that we'll look at. If we can integrate it properly, we'd certainly do that as well. And John, the only other question: Townside is going to three sixty five. Is the Board of Education? Do we know if they're doing similar? And uh, Board of Education actually uses Google Workspaces. Um, it, it's something that we looked at as well, uh, and quite frankly, if we didn't have uh, CGIS compliance, uh, it, it's very integral to, to the police department and how they function. If we didn't have that, we'd be wide open um, looking at you know all kinds of different services. But because of uh, the, the primary factor there is uh, any data store has to be U.S geolocated um, with screen personnel. Uh, in, in addition to that, the state's kind of like the, uh, the state is really the client as far as CGIS goes with the FBI, uh, and we operate under their umbrella. Um, and with that, uh, the state has okayed Microsoft 365. Thank you. Thanks, John. <clears throat> I owe you one. <laughs> maybe, maybe two, three. <laughs> There's no other questions. Uh, economic development. Ray, you can now dazzle us with the economic development jargon. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? You ready now? <laughs> Here we go. Uh, <clears throat> I have uh, not <clears throat> filled the excuse me <clears throat> the economic development position um, in economic development. In fact. Um, most of that budget has been uh, reduced to near zero, except for uh, 
some fees, perhaps. Um, I'm also, I have uh, eliminated and will be eliminating the uh, grant writer position. Um, that comes out of the fee budget line item. Um, <clears throat> Um, a lot of my uh, grant administration and mostly my administration uh, duties, um, I have uh, um, farmed out to uh, community development services, um, some personnel and finance, um, um, and also kind of slowing down on the number and the type of grants. Um, many grants require um, uh, matches. And at this point, I think we're trying to cut back a little bit on, you know, the 20% match or the 50% match. And a lot of these federal grants, they have a minimum threshold of a million dollars, so we would have to come up with, you know, you know, some up, upwards to, you know, 200 to $400,000. So <clears throat> the grant activity um, will be slowing down a bit. Um, and I'll be uh, working also closely with the uh, Middlesex Chamber of Commerce. They have an individual that's assigned to Rocky Hill. Um, it's been a great benefit. Some of the outreach activities that haven't been done in the past six months or so. Um, you know, going out, trying to find out what's going on. Working with realtors, I still do that. Uh, they call, you know, I try to respond. Um, so I'd like to try to do that for this budget year and see how that works out. Um, also, um, there is a vacancy in the uh, planning division and community development services for the uh, assistant town planner position. Um, I'd like to explore the possibility of combining that assistant town planner slash economic development coordinator position. Um, many times that has worked. I was that for a couple of decades doing both plan town planning, economic development. Um, um, it does work uh, pretty well uh, as long as there's no enforcement involved for that position because you can't go out and say I'm here to help you but you have to get rid of your sign or you're going to get fined you know so we have to work that out but um, I think with those uh, uh, those revisions I think we might be in good shape do we have any questions on economic development nope. all right We'll move on to uh, item B, public safety. We'll go down to fire admin. <laughs> supervision. Fire supervision. Fire supervision. Uh -huh. Yep. Fire supervision. Is that administration? And yeah. It is. Yeah, administration. Uh -huh. I should look at the big switch. Okay. And go through here. Yeah, unfortunately, the fire have, I think I have uh, six or seven tabs throughout the fire department. So, fire administration, you know, we're looking at um, additional increases in training, you know, required uh, hours of training. Um, you know, firefighting uh, certifications one and two. Um, looking at an increase uh, for uh, continued education. Um, as far as uh, equipment or building, you know, repair, looking at uh, a hose rack for station one at a you know minimal cost of eighteen hundred dollars, uh, and also. Uh, an increase in their communication radio service. That's for those uh, non-warrantied uh, Motorola's. Yeah, the, um, that's why you're seeing a, an increase in that. So they, those are the ones that are not warrantied, so it's a kind of a pay-as-you-go uh, situation, the increase in communications. Okay. Where are we on there? Aren't their communications one of the items that we're in the process of upgrading or go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> we, we do need to mm -hmm. we're looking at like another to be obsolete very soon yes so gonna, yes I mean, so it's definitely something we're looking at uh it's not in this particular budget i think if there's other funding sources available wasn't part of that the 
highway money was being set aside for the, that communication? Right, so I say, yeah, not in this particular okay. budget. So it'd be for uh, any set aside or additional funds. So not in the general budget. This is their uh, maintenance of the existing pay as you go. Right. Um, I, guess, I guess what I'm asking is if we're in the process of upgrading or mm -hmm. going to upgrade, then do we still need the maintenance service because the new stuff would be warranted? I just don't know where we are on, mm -hmm. on that. I know yeah. we got money right. from the highway allocations. Because I don't know how long that, that process will take. Yeah. You know, yeah. We don't know when we'll get additional funding coming in because we're not fully funded in that program yet. Right, to do a full overall. I think yeah. we still have to at least budget for our existing. Okay. And if, and if we don't use it, you know, we can roll that over. Yeah, but I don't think at this point we may not want to do a complete reduction on this, knowing that we have to continue to function as is before you do a full overall. Because if anything, it'd have to be a it's not a partial gradual uh, phase in. So is that in our uh, is that part of the CIP portion of the budget? The their Should communication piece. Yeah, I'm trying to use it or a special revenue source. Uh, it's, it's not in as a new item. It'd be on a on a non-recurring list, which doesn't make it through the budget process. But if we want to address it in CIP, that might be a good time to okay. bring it forward. We could do that. Okay. And is that something where there's any possibility of a of a lease arrangement, or do we have to buy that? Equipment. It seems like it's something that does come up every, uh, every I don't know, five or ten years. Do we need to buy all that equipment, and then you know, are we able to recover any costs when we're sunsetting it and rolling in new equipment, or how does how does that work? Is there a way that we can kind of fix that as an annual item, or what's the thought with how we replenish that equipment when it gets out of date? Uh, that, that's why wouldn't we be able to to do that? You know, that's just from a from you know. We do do leases on equipment, software, or, uh, hardware equipment. Um, we can certainly look into it, trying to avoid um, calling up the fire chief. <laughs> well, he's here. We can give him his three minutes. Two? Uh, two? Do we give him two? <laughs> Mike, two minutes. Regarding communication. <laughs> Go. I think the transmitters we're talking about are the legacy transmitters that are located in the police department. Um, we're looking at about a hundred thousand dollars <throat> to replace them. The LAH money is billed at as of today, I believe, eighty-nine thousand five hundred. Uh, with still three months to go. Collection is a little bit less than that. Uh, we're looking into that today based on some of the conversations we had last night. So I don't have those those exact numbers for you, but I want to say the collection rate's close to 70,000. Right, yeah, you're looking at probably, it's, it's consistent. I don't think it's alarming. I think someone maybe gave a different impression of where you are with that. I think you're doing very well right. it tends to be a 60-day turnaround and i don't see any you know any peaks or valleys in that so, i mean that's the usage is frequent so you're right you're probably at the 89 you're probably running at about 68 so you're at a 60-day turnaround which is normal on state reimbursement can we had a heavy month in uh, march so you'll see those numbers come up shortly um can we lease those uh as for leasing yeah. we are meeting with them friday to ask that exact question. Okay. Um, typically, we also asked about, um, there was a question about uh, value, trade-in value, sunsetting. We typically run those that there's barely any value left. Um, I can tell you on these large transmitters, there's hardly any value in there. Um, when we replace portables and we replace them because they're no longer serviceable parts-wise, or program-wise, when we go to turn them in for some type of value, they say just drill a hole in them and throw them out. You know that's that's how long we use these. Um, so I hope that answers it. And I think I hit the two-minute mark. Thank Ray's you. He's got the Thank you, Mr. Gary. So. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So that may be an item to look at as far as leasing mm -hmm. yeah. and then a combination of the repairs and maintenance portion here plus the state highway money to cover the replacement. Noted. Any other questions or comments on fire administration or supervision? All right. Go to prevention. Uh, we're actually going to go to firefighting. Uh, uh, fire marshal will uh, come to us on the second. Oh, okay. So firefighting, item C. Yes. Oops. I'm scrolling. Okay. I just wanted to note out the, uh, the major change in there. As you can see, the hydrants, it's not that we don't have to pay for hydrants. Um, that's being transferred to the uh, fire prevention uh, for the fire marshal that's overseeing that uh, particular account. And uh, the pension number is, uh, is as given by the actuary, so a slight increase in that. Yeah, and the, um, <clears throat> the major, uh, the major component or change or addition would be um, turnout gear. Um, the helmet replacement program, many of the helmets are obsolete at this point, so we need to get uh, the firefighters uh, the proper gear. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a multi-year uh, replacement program. It's DC in 5627. I think the recruitment and activities is just a reflection of, uh, of membership and, and retaining them. So we're just seeing increases in those to uh, to keep the department at level. Now, was there there was a legislation proposed to assist? And how is that? Do you know how that's tracking right now? To assist in the recruitment uh, for fire, EMS. We don't know. I don't know what they're going to do about it. Okay. Yeah, it is out there. All right. Any questions on firefighting? Um, apparatus maintenance, item D. Not much of a uh, change. We're just looking at, uh, you know, the salaries. Hmm? salaries. Yeah, salaries, and then, you know, continuing maintenance, tires, batteries, some. Uh, Hose uh, replacement in number line 56, 5736. Not seeing any questions. Um, are we good with the uh, public safety portion? Okay, move on to health and human services. I would just note on that uh, uh, for the apparatus that there was actually a cut on remember our miscellaneous 70,000 did occur in here so we did make that reduction on there although it doesn't show there was a request and we cut back on some of the parts in the entire line so it, it looks like it's a, a low increase but we've actually made adjustments on that I'm a slow driver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I realized you were the one driving. <laughs> you didn't? I thought we were in the back. <laughs> yeah, I'm multitasking. <laughs> Human services. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Human services, it's actually human use and senior services. Um, you'll, you'll see a, uh, on the full-time salary, uh, the first line item, uh, a reduction of $52,000. As you may recall, um, <clears throat> um, two full-time positions were, were hired a short time ago. Um, one position became vacant. Um, so I propose not to fill that position at this point to save save some some uh, save some money. Um, <clears throat> it will not impact um, significantly at, at this time of this year. 
um, the operations um, for the human services. Uh, the current employee we did have retained, um, as I mentioned earlier, I think earlier this, mm -hmm. my first uh, summary, um, her task has also included um, uh, assisting the Fair Rent Commission, processing the Fair Rent applications, working with uh, individuals who, um, who need assistance uh, with fair rent issues and uh, managing uh, the cases. I think other, we had reduction in tenant evictions, which has done more, uh, they're taking a more in-house um, approach to that rather than the outsourcing. Yeah, they have, uh, th I believe there are two storage containers, one storage container, as I've said, um, that we are using now as opposed to uh, what the, the past practice was. Um, so that has greatly uh, reduced the cost for evictions. You know, because we have, when we evict, we have to store the uh, tenants' belongings for a certain period of time. Did you say that there were two jobs and then you're giving back one job? Right, there are two jobs, there were two vacancies. We hired two people, uh, one position became vacant. So we still have that one position. And you're not going to fill that no. position? Not this year. And was that position one that we filled with ARPA money? Yes, those, those are the two. One was human uh, services and the other was youth services. Those are those two ARPA positions that came in. And as you said, one filled and one became vacant. So we <clears throat> talked with human services, although I'm sure it'll be, a, a you know, sometimes a challenge, but uh, they, they feel that they can accommodate what they need with that one person in the youth service side who's already taking on some of the duties. So. And what about the reduction in the part-time salaries? That was the, uh, a portion of the part-time was to cover the full-time portion of that. So that's why you're seeing that was a shift. And that's more of something you're seeing of the, the budget of the previous year where we had the ARPA position come in. It was originally a part-time person. And then instead of the part-time, going back to our recollection of ARPA, that, sh that was made to be a full-time. So it was offset part-time, decreased, moved into full-time, then funded with ARPA. And it was, that you'll see that it happens on the other page as well. Okay. We're watching time evolve on a budget page. <laughs> Any questions on the? Yeah, so, so the, posi yeah. the position that's not being filled, um, you indicated that it had been funded by ARPA money. So does that suggest that that was intended to be kind of a temporary position associated with the pandemic and, the, and then that position would then kind of wind down as the pandemic did? Correct. I think the intention was at that point to fund it with the ARPA and then anything that has, to, as far as positions, I think, we, in fact, we had a police officer that came in as, as ARPA, that it was the one-time funding in that year. As you know, we took our ARPA funding for this year. A majority of it is put as general fund revenue, which wouldn't make it available to fund full-time positions. So you'll see it in the 22-23 year. And I know that was a lot of ARPA talk, but uh, <laughs> we had the 2.7 available in the previous year when we were doing these positions. In the 22-23 year, we've taken the 1.4 million in to fund it as a source of revenue. That, in that way, leaving less money available to fund these. These positions are now general fund positions. Okay, but the position in question that's not being refilled, was that a new position created? By ARPA. <laughs> Okay, so after yes. the pandemic, so it's not, so basically this person, this per position not being filled, it, it restores us back to where we were in 2019, so to speak, as opposed to a true reduction. We have, right. well, we, we still, won. we hired two. Yeah. We so. hired two positions, so we still have it. We're still plus one. We're still yes. plus one. On the next page. Yeah. Okay, got it. <clears throat> and just in terms of, you mentioned that position became vacant, and I'm, I'm want to be sensitive to any, I guess, to personnel matters, but is did we find out that that person wasn't fully allocated um, or did we were able to provide the same level of service but without that person or is it more just it wasn't the right fit? Is that something that we might see again come up as a request? I just want to understand a little bit more about, um, I guess, how that, how that position is, is currently vacant. 
It became vacant, um, I would say, out of those categories you gave me, probably it wasn't the right fit. Right. I can't go okay. beyond that. that. That's fine. I just want to understand if there's a need that, you know, uh, and uh, understanding the the demands of the budget that we're all in and that we have to make hard yeah. decisions, um, just want to see if, if the services we offer, you know, will be impacted or if this might be something that we look to fill in the future. Um, yeah, um, if, if funding becomes available, yeah. I would I would like to try to fill this in, in the future. This yeah. position, yeah, if funding was available, yeah, it would it be filled. Available. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? No. And the last item: youth services. The last tab. Well, so the um, position we were just talking about, the one that is remaining, you know, shows up on the youth services as the as the uh, as an increase. Um, youth services coordinator. Um, I think yeah, other than that, a slight yeah. reduction in that DEMAS program, and that's just a, it's an allocation of the actual funding of the program, so it's a reflection of that. Any questions on youth services? Is the, is the youth service position, is, that, is there any sharing with Board of Ed, or? It's not. No. No, no, we're not sharing with the Board of Ed, no. I'd say indirectly assist, but not a shared. Yeah, we, they, JRB they work with, and so forth. You know, assist. Question? Comment? Motion? No. <clears throat> I just I know that we're not supposed to get involved on the Board of Ed side in terms of how they spend their money, right? Um, I'm just wondering. How are those schools? I guess we can't answer this. I, we can ask Board of Ed. I'm just curious about like the mental health staffing and the counseling staffing and all of that on the Board of Ed side. Is it light? Is it moderate? Is it heavy? And is it comparable to what we have and what we need on the town side? I'm curious. We can try the question. Any other questions? If not, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.